So I come from the speech writing and public speaking world, and whenever you're crafting a really special speech, one of the main things you're considering is your audience and the purpose of your speech. And it's the same for a Christmas production. Any time that you're producing a speech or a special service or anything that might be unusual for your audience, you need to consider what your audience's expectations are. You also need to consider the purpose of the event or of the message that you're going to be writing for. And there's four other things you need to be thinking about. Time, talent, team, and tech. Let's get started. First off, what is the purpose? If your church has done a really simple paired back service for who knows how many years, you might be breaking out of the mold a little bit. And so if you're pitching this production to church leadership and you might need to convince them that it's a good fit for your church, it makes sense to have a strong purpose for what the message of the production will be. But also it's good for you as a director and a producer to have an understanding of maybe what your purpose is going to be for the production. We're thinking about a couple different angles here. One is what has your church typically done in the past and how might you be wanting to shift or change that direction? You're also considering how this production fits into the larger church mission. So is this production primarily meant for the children of your church to have an activity that gets them engaged with the meaning of Christmas? Or is this a type of production that's meant to be distinctly evangelical to the people in your community? Or is it meant to be a very sober evening of reflection? These types of larger purposes or meta purposes will help inform what type of service you should be producing and also give you a direction to go in. There are four major types of Christmas Eve services with a bajillion variations among all of them. And that's a whole separate video, but it's important to know who your audience is and what your purpose is so that you know what type of production might be the best fit for you. Secondly, your audience. When you're thinking about maybe changing how things are done a little bit at your church, you need to consider what the community expectations will be around this production. If your church has historically been very conservative, you may be seeing traditional Christmas carols and have only the biblical passages read aloud, then changing to a full-on Christmas cantata with costumes and monologues and lighting changes is going to be a huge cultural shift. And while I think it is good for special services to kind of push on the creative boundaries and the stylistic boundaries of what you typically do in your church services, I don't think they're the time to go completely out of the box because what that means is your congregation is going to be talking about the style and the lighting and the costuming and the monologues instead of the meaning of the message that you're going to be portraying. So if your church's style is kind of over here and you want to end up over here, maybe for the first year, you just push a little bit towards the middle, right? And then the next year, maybe add a few more elements. So do be considering what your church's culture is, how you can fit what is normal while maybe stretching it just a little bit. Some of those areas that you might be stretching in are how dramatic of productions are allowed, how much production value can go in in terms of costume, lighting, scenery, that sort of thing. Consider what is normal and what is expected and where you would like to go with it and see if it's a cultural fit. You also have to consider what is your church's stance around presenting doctrinal truth. Do you have to have a script approved word for word or are devotional speakers speakers pre-approved and then they can produce their own script that they will be speaking from. Are women allowed to speak? Are women allowed to teach? What are the age brackets that are allowed to be speaking or presenting or acting? Some churches have much stricter cultures around these things and some churches are, are a lot more open. So be knowledgeable about what again is appropriate for your church's culture and know whether it's appropriate to ask for permission uh, if there's something that you want to flex or change or do a little bit differently and know when it's time to to just stick within what is considered appropriate for your congregation. Another touchy subject that can happen in churches is the talk around music. If your church is historically more conservative or more limited in terms of what music is allowed, what artists songs can be sung, and stylistic choices as far as instruments, backing tracks, that sort of thing, you want to be aware of, again, where it is that your sort of optimal program might be landing and where it is that is normal for your church right now. And again, you might not get to do every single song that you have your heart set on, but consider what is most important to you if you're wanting to kind of flex again, expanding what your church has done in the past and adding new elements. Don't add everything all at once. 
consider what program length is expected by your people, right? So in the church where I produced my Christmas Eve programs, we always kept the service to right around an hour, sometimes squeaking an hour or ten, and that included a little bit of congregational singing at the beginning and also a candlelight service that the pastor organized at the very end of the program. So I had to keep my scripts to between 45 to 50 minutes just to ensure that people were able to go home and celebrate Christmas with their families and I wasn't creating a full-on production that would be beyond the norms of what we typically did. Now that we've discussed what the cultural expectations might be for your Christmas program, let's look at the four T's. Time, team, talent, and tech. First off, time. If you're watching this and it's March, you are in a perfect time frame to be writing something completely from scratch and taking it wherever your heart desires. If you're watching this up in October, you need to find a program and get on it. What can I say? I am a blunt person. You got to get moving here. So it's the calendar time that you have between today and Christmas Eve, but it's also how much time do you want to give to this, right? Do you want to be working on the script every single weekend for the next few weeks and then casting, choosing music, producing, all of that? Or are you wanting to kind of get this thing rolling and move right into the coordinating aspects? It's up to you, but that will help inform whether you're purchasing a script, um, whether you're writing something originally, whether you're bringing in speakers who create their own components. All of those are factors and they can be worked with within the time that you have to work with. Everything can be squished down and up and down and up, but considering how much time you want to give to the project will help inform those decisions. Secondly, who is your team? Will you be running this essentially alone? Are you the writer, director, producer, music leader, all of it? Or do you have someone who's going to work with you on the music side or someone who is doing the scripting or someone who is stepping in to coordinate with you? Consider who you have to bring on board to take some of that weight off of your shoulders. Or if you're like me and you prefer to kind of go it alone, it's an option. It's definitely doable. But again, it goes back to how much time do you want to spend on this project and how big of a project are you making it? Next up, and it's also people, but in this case, instead of your core team that bears the weight and responsibility, this is your talent. These are the people who will be up front during the production. These are your musicians, your speakers, your narrators, your readers, your cast members, your monologists, everybody who will be seen or is running sound or is ushering or is delivering candles to be lit. This is your talent. One thing that I had to keep an eye on in my crew, most of them were between the ages of 18 and 30, so I had to watch out for who had job changes, who was expecting children, who was getting engaged, because as I was planning six to eight months in advance, I had to think through who might not be available or might not be willing to commit that time to this level of production. Think through how many people you might even just have available to work on this how many of them might say no, uh, what kind of minimum base you would need to make the project a success, and also what amount of workload are you able to put on your participants? Are they likely to be free for rehearsals, you know, every Sunday after church or to pop into the church on a Wednesday or Thursday night? Is that doable or is, is the program that you create going to have to be something that everyone can essentially learn on their own and practice a few times together? So that is time, team, and talent. Last T is tech. Now, I don't know about you, but I have seen churches who have, you know, 100 to 400 people in attendance each Sunday. I've seen a huge range of technical capabilities. Some people are still in older churches where there's maybe one overhead projector and a couple of mics and they have a piano and that's totally fine. And other churches are going to have the entire soundboard. They've got monitors, they've got teleprompters, they've got a screen in the back everyone's watching. Every church is in a different spot on the technological spectrum. So as a leader, you need to be aware of what it is your church is able to do so that you can work within those limits or work to expand those limits if necessary. For example, the first year I directed a Christmas Eve service, I discovered pretty early on that we did not have enough mics for the stage setup that I was anticipating and the number of people that I wanted to have their own preset mic so there would be less sharing, less confusion in the sound booth, all of those. We didn't have enough. We needed a few more. Because I discovered that all the way back in August for a Christmas Eve production, we were able to fit those into the larger AV budget for that year. Some expansions had been planned anyways, so the church was able to order a few pieces of equipment that we could then use for that production 
and for years on in the future. So just think through what is technologically capable for your church. If your sound team is able to handle video packages, lighting changes, camera switches, or if it needs to be pretty minimalist, pretty simple, lights down, lights up. All of these are completely doable. This whole list of questions is just to get you thinking about what are the boundaries almost that your production kind of has to fit into, and then what might be important enough for you to ask for a change or pitch that something needs to happen to better facilitate the type of program that you're looking to produce. 